I bother with then Tanganyika it was a straight line from Lake Victoria all the way to the Indian Ocean. It was only in 1860-something, because Tanganyika was given to the Germany, to the German territory. And uh, on the German emperor's birth, 50th birthday, it was called Otto von Bismarck. Queen Victoria, who was the head of the British Empire, in a gesture said that on your 50th anniversary, I give you the highest peak in Africa, Kilimanjaro. And that is how, you see, Kilimanjaro was originally in Kenya. But then you see the map between Kenya and Tanganyika, now Tanzania, a straight line from Lake Victoria to Kilimanjaro, then it comes into Kenya, takes Kilimanjaro to Tanganyika, then again a straight line to the Indian Ocean. That is how it, it was done, it's arbitrarily. Then, uh, but formal colonization, actually, of Kenya took place in 19... But when the British first came here, they started building a railway line. They built a railway line, and they built a railway line from Mombasa. It was called Kenya Uganda Railway. It was built from Mombasa up to Kisumu. You ask yourself, if it was Kenya Uganda Railway, how did it end up in Kisumu? The reason is, at that time, Kisumu was part of Uganda. Uganda's boundary came all the way up to Naivasha. From Naivasha up to Lake, Lake, uh, up to Lake Turkana, the west of that was Uganda. That's why it was called Kenya Uganda Railway. And when it reached Kisumu, it had reached Uganda. From there, they were now taken by ship across the lake to Port Bell in Uganda. Then, um, but then this Kenya was called actually just a territory. It was actually run by a company called British East Africa uh, Corporation. They were just using it for hunting, um, coming to look for, search for gold and ivory. But then came one colonial master, one imperialist by the name of, uh, uh, his, his other name, but later on he became known as Lord Delamere. He came through Somalia on a horseback. And when he came on a horseback, he arrived on Mount Kenya. And then he saw a very beautiful land around Mount Kenya. He came down through Laikipia into what is the present day Nyahururu, they called Thompson Falls at that time, into the Rift Valley, through Nakuru, Njoro, Eldoret, or Tsigishu, up to Mount, Mount Elgon. So he saw a very beautiful land. So when he came back to Nairobi, he went and met the governor. He told the governor that, look, you have a beautiful land here, which is ripe for large-scale agriculture. You have built a railway line from Mombasa all the way to the west. But the railway line will have nothing else to transport. It will be transporting goods from Mombasa to interior. But on the way back, it will be going back empty. To make this railway line productive, you need to introduce large-scale agriculture. So this is now 
Lodelemia. And I'm ready to go back home and campaign and bring white settlers to come and settle here and uh, do large-scale agriculture on condition that you agree that each person I bring here will get 10,000 acres free plus black laborers. <laughs> 